Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. I haven't done any nightcaps for the last fortnight because I've been away in America and Canada on holiday with Debs. So in tonight's nightcap, we've done the draw for the little DTI indicator. Mick comes down with Stig and we'll have a, a really good laugh in the garden uh, with a dog. But he eventually does get out a, a winning name for that, so that'll be drawn later on. The first part of this nightcap is basically going to be all about um, what we did in America when we were at the bash. There's a lot of stuff I brought back, a lot of gifts I got given. Um, there's some of your meal came in, so I'm going to be showing quite a lot of that. Uh, towards the end of the first part, um, I finished fabricating the stand from the inverter, so there is a little bit of welding, a little bit of machining on at the end. Part two will be nearly all machining. I've got some plastic plastic space that's the machine so I'll be machining some plastic in the lathe. Right. Put. One. Good lad. Good lad. <laughs> Got one. At last. Good boy. It's here, Danny Daniel. That's then you know, it's a Scandinavian name by the look of that. Yeah, I'm going to do another giveaway once again. It's for a nice little imperial clock gauge. It's an old clock gauge, really heavy made one. Bob had it apart, cleaned it, and made it work. It's absolutely perfect. If you want a chance to win the clock gauge, all you have to do is send me an email, that's my email address up there. Send an email with your name on, make sure you put both parts of your name, like John Mills, do just put John. Um, your name goes into the bucket, it's drawn out by me or Steg or Emmy or whoever. If your name's drawn out, I'll post it off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. It's just a way of me giving a little bit back uh, for all the support I've had from my viewers. I've actually got viewers now sending things in to be put in the giveaway because if you're going to draw with a hundred clock gauges in you're never going to use them this is the DTI for this week's giveaway Mark 2 Hercules it really is a nice heavy duty compact DTI once again Bob thanks very much The trip out to America was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we flew from Newcastle down to Heathrow and then flew into uh, Fort Worth, Texas. We stopped with a friend there, a lad called Herb Blair. Herb has a YouTube channel, very similar to mine, well worth a look. Anyway, Herb really looked after us, uh, him and his wife. Showed me some of the sites, uh, went for some amazing meals, went to have a look at a couple of workshops that were absolutely unbelievable. Uh, while I was with her, we went into a, probably one of the best tool stores I've ever been into in my life. I'll show a little bit of film of that. After we'd been to Herb's, we flew across to Ontario, California, uh, to Stan's place where the bash was held. This was absolutely a, a fantastic, um, a fantastic event. I got to meet lots of YouTube viewers, uh, which was fantastic. Um, it really was. People coming to to shake my hand from the other side of the world, absolutely fantastic. I met all of the other YouTube creators that were there, Keith Fenner, Adam Booth, Bruce, they were all there and they're all just, they're just the same in real life as they are on videos, absolutely great set of lads. Uh, I won one or two little prizes, I got quite a few gifts, I'll be showing some of them. When we were at the bash, I had a day away with uh, Mike, we went across to Los Angeles, to uh, Texas Instruments. They make various temperature gauges. I got some obsolete stock temperature gauges. Um, and I also had a look at the lads workshop. Uh, he's got some fantastic gear in there. After the bash, we flew down to Phoenix and from Phoenix, we flew to Vancouver. We were met by one of my viewers, a lad called Keith Matthews. I'd never met Keith before. Keith had never met me, but he'd seen plenty of us on, on YouTube. And we hit it off straight away. What a fantastic guy and his wife. The two wives got on together well, so we had a really good time. 
And what Keith does, he runs a couple of tugboats and he pushes the log pontoons up and down the river to the sawmills. And when somebody says, what do you want to do? And you've got a tugboat standing there. So I had a day out on the tugboat, uh, which was great. I had a tour around the sawmill, which was very interesting. I will be going to post a little bit of all these various things in coming nightcaps. Keith's got a, a fantastic workshop, some real nice gear. He's got a Mint Harrison lathe, very similar to mine. Uh, I took quite a bit of video in his workshop and I did get one or two items of him to bring home. Anyway, I'll be showing little bits of this in the nightcaps, in future nightcaps, to come. After Vancouver, we took a ferry across to Vancouver Island uh, to meet up with a lad that did the film for Deb when Deb was really poorly with her breast cancer. Uh, the lad wants to remain anonymous, he doesn't want to be any anybody's workshop uh, on video, which is fair enough. He did have a fantastic workshop, mate, I must admit. Uh, we had two or three trips out with him. Uh, one trip, we went away to a, a sawmill, like a lumberjack camp, um, cum museum, and there was lots of vintage steam engines, uh, like winches there. I got quite a lot of film of that. That'll all be going to get put into coming nightcaps. What we did do, we went to the exact spot uh, where the film was made for Deb. And I just I just took one look at them and we're both basically bursting into tears. It was absolutely um, amazing how moving it was. Um, we went to see the people who were in the video, uh, the girls at the bank, the, the people in the the people in the DIY store. It was absolutely amazing because three years ago we honestly thought that uh, this none of this was going to happen. And it just, just goes to show how things how things can happen, how things can improve, uh, how life moves on. Anyway, thanks very much. We we'll really enjoyed the last year. <laughs> we'll definitely be coming back. And I think Dave actually wants to move to Vancouver and to live. It is such a fantastic place. Once again, thanks very much. I brought these two items back from Vancouver. Uh, Keith Matthews gave us them. A nice oil can. And it's a spinel protector for a Harrison lathe. He actually had four of these. It's absolutely brand new. Pristine. So now I have got a spare spinel protector. Um, I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. But somebody will end up with that as well. So they're two nice items. Thanks very much Keith. These are the temperature gauges. I was given by... Texas in Instruments, actually got magnets on the back and you glue them on and they give surface temperature the likes of electric motors and that sort of thing will be glued onto there I've got four of them, all different readings, different scales I'm not quite sure what I'll be doing with them, I'll certainly keep at least one and I'll possibly give the rest away there's a tool here that was given, there was all the YouTube creators got a one, they were made by a lad called Phil Phil Desjardins I'm pronouncing his name wrong, I'm sure I am, but anyway, it's a real nicely made tool, it's a top follower, spring with a top follower, and that's been colour case hardened, really nice, nice sharp point, this one's different, it's got a, a cap head in the back, that will just spring in, so I've got two of them now. There's a tool here that was given to us by a lad called Bruce Witham. All the creators got one of these. Bruce also sells them. What it's for is for measuring the DP angle of gears. DP stands for diametrical pitch. So all you do, which is, it's a simple but brilliant idea, you put it in the mesh with a gear. You can see what's meshing in there. At 14, I know the DP on these gears is 14, but it's such a simple yet effective idea. I'll probably do a little bit more on these later on. It's also got a shape in there, and if you fail that lately, you can open bottles of beer with it. Anyway, Bruce, thanks very much for that. As I say, Bruce, Bruce, as I say, Bruce has got a YouTube channel, well worth a look. He specialises in getting out broken taps and studs and nuts and bolts. A real clever guy and a proper gentleman. These were brought to the bash for me by a girl called Emma Ritson. Emma has a YouTube channel as well, Emma's Spare Room. 
and was one of the winners in Keith Fenner's toolbox giveaway. Anyway, these were given to her by one of our viewers for me in what they are. There's a set of drives for the RPM counter I got given. This still needs to go to Bob's or whatever to be sorted out. So I know I've got the full set of drives to go with that. This morning, this tin will work in the post. It's a complete Smith's rev counter with all the same bits and pieces in absolutely mint condition. It was sent to us by a lad called Tony Simmons from Heritage Engineering. That's a large card there. I've had bits and pieces of Tony before. He was basically tidying up and he found he had two of these and he's given one to me. That's fantastic Tony, thank you very much. So I think the other one will probably end up as a really nice giveaway prize. It's probably just having two. So thanks once again to Emma and please thank the person that gave you these. Really appreciate it. After the head came off me, dead blue hammer, I bought a new one. Not expensive. I think it was £15 on eBay delivered. Proper Thor copper with a rawhide ending. It's amazing all the different plastics we have these days, and rawhide still used for a, a hammer face. This also turned about work uh, from a gentleman called Bob Monaghan. He drew it, it's quite a nice covering that I'll read in the start of it. It says, uh, Hi John, I hope you can use these bastards. So he's obviously thinks in the same light as me. Uh, he goes on to say he's got quite a lot of them and he's, he's only used a few of them and he's trying to thin out some of the stuff he's got uh, at home in his shop and I'll be able to use them, they're uh, UNF taps. So I can definitely, I'll definitely use them. Uh, a lot of them are doubles, the ones I haven't got, I'll, I've got sets made up. These are better than some of the ones I've got. So I'll make a set up in any spare ones I'll be, be giving away to my friend, make or one of the lads will get them. Anyway, Bob, thanks very much. And I'm sure I'll be able to use the bastards. I managed to get all the bits of box section cut and then now it's time to tack weld it all together. The main weld I will actually weld through this satellite surface thrust, but it, it is easier to grind it clean. I have got goggles on, or at least I've got safety goggles on. Things up. So that is square that way. So I put a tack weld in there, it means I can still bend it in or out to get it get it lined up. Big well that's ideal for doing these nice and quick. Once it go in so we have tacked it I can bring it in it's touching and then I'll tack on this corner. And it should square that way. Way that way, one more tack and that will stop it from moving. It's 
three legs on, one more. It's looking not too bad at all. A little bit of tweaking here and there, but I'm sure we'll. That's pretty good actually. Maybe one or two tacks on them, we'll turn it round. There's only one leg here that'll need tweaking out very slightly. Those three are good. Packing up with no gloves on, I know I shouldn't be doing it, but it will be I'll be putting gloves on when I can fully weld it. Uh, right, so this one wants to just a little bit we move that to get into place, not a great lot. The last one. Once again, just a, a tweak, nothing really. So where three arms would be handy. Right, so that's it all tacked together. The first one will go out sit in there, and there'll be a nice top goes on. So I can use it as storage down the same area. Well, I've cast that on as well. Quite happy with that. I'm using the little all tech inverter 180. If I had the only with a spool going in, absolutely excellent little tool. You can hear the noise that weld that's making, it's making the right, right sort of noises for a decent big weld. And that's the weld it's producing. Right, I've kind of got it in place where it's going to stay now. I'll be top going on there and I'll be able to use that for more storage space. And obviously it's going to stop any shite from going into the, into the face converter. One thing I could have done, I could have moved this further back. It's a little bit tight to get that plug in. But it's not the end of the world. I'll start it up and see how much quiet that actually is. And that's not bad at all. We'll start the lathe up. That's the lathe running there. And that's a lot quieter than it was. And you're never going to get rid of the noise altogether because you've got to let it work out on the fan running. And I'm quite happy with that. Definitely an improvement on the way it was. piece of nice board that will go on top of there and it is on wheels so I can pull it out and move it around wherever I want to deal with it but it's just going to live in there that's something I've been going to basically do since I got the lathe anywhere now it's done